Are you interested in, um, the lives of saints? No. Oh, just reading about them then? Right. Wow, that's amazing to read such a thick book and on a subject you have no particular, um, I know this is gonna sound like a really stupid line, but you look familiar, really, sincerely. I'm sorry, I should- We had a meeting. I had an idea for a movie. I tried to sell you the idea. That's it. And I promised myself that if I ever saw you again, I would have the wherewithal to tell you what a colossal asshole you were. Oh? Which I wasn't going to do, because after all this time, I don't exactly care anymore. Not as much as I thought I would. But since you asked. I want to apologize. I do apologize. Just tell me what exactly I'm apologizing for, and I'll be extremely contrite. Really? If you can't remember, don't worry about it. I can't remember because I was no doubt dazzled by your beauty and intelligence. Okay. If you really want, you can apologize for making me feel like a complete fool for being so pretentious and absurd as to design to pitch you a piece of literature. <laughs> An update of Dostoevsky's The Idiot, if that rings a bell. For making me feel ashamed to care about Dostoevsky. Literature in general. Though I suppose treating me like a pathetic, desperate loser gave you a lot of satisfaction. Because in some sense, I remind you of the girls who wouldn't even consider going out with you in high school. And in that way, I've forgiven and even pitied you. Bye-bye. Um. Nice seeing you again. Wait, how can I, what's your name? It's all it took. I was in love. This girl, this girl is so sexy, Dave. She's one of those super smart intensoids who used to intimidate me. But I'm so ready, you know? I'm so sick of the melters, the girls who lose their fucking minds whenever they're with you. Suddenly, your hobbies are their hobbies. Your opinions are their opinions. Your plaid shirts are on their backs all the time. It's like, what happened to the interesting girl I met, you know? Glad you're here, Dave. It's nice to see you. My couch is your couch. Stay as long as you want. I can't do it anymore. Do what? Wake up. Get out of bed. Brush my teeth. Take my clothes off. Get in the shower. Wash the hair. Wash the body. Dry off the body. Dry the hair. Put on boxers, put on pants. Watch man, buckle it. Three separate steps involved in just buckling it. Buttons. Buttons, man. 10 buttons on average, counting two per sleeve. Isn't that a lot of buttons to be buttoning and unbuttoning every day? You're wearing a t-shirt. That's why. The socks, the shoes, the laces. The laces that need to be tied. And that's just the first hour of the day. It takes you an hour to get dressed? If I get dressed, if I bother, if I go through all the mind-numbingly repetitious, relentless, never-ending, meaningless steps, every single day, only to be undone again by night, start over by day. Not that big of a deal, Dave. We're all like Penelope on the goddamn spinning wheel. I actually like my little morning rituals, my morning ablutions. Weaving and unweaving, weaving and unweaving. I appreciate a routine. Is there any point to it all, or does one indeed just light up a joint? Do you really think you should be doing that? The question remains, what am I doing with my life? Breaking my couch. That's right, I am back. Back on your couch. You're writing a novel. But that's what the world needs. That's exactly what's missing. Not enough novels to go around. You're depressing the hell out of me, Dave. 
Ever thought of getting a job? Now there's a novel idea. A little social interaction in the workday world would not be such a terrible thing. A novel idea to replace the writing of a novel, for which I have no ideas. We're going out. Do you want to go find her? I don't even know her name. She'll return eventually. We're all creatures of habit, desperately clung to forces of familiarity.